All right, welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, yes, indeed, uh, taking a look at some of those statements made yesterday at that valedictory session and previously, and of course, some other actions that will happen a couple of days before the tenure wraps up. Mr. Gabashewo joins us uh, virtually. He's a senior special assistant, media and publicity to the president. Uh, we also do have Mr. Gosin Okoye, who is a former presidential candidate of the UDP. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, Mr. Sheo. Thank you both for joining us on the program today. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Well, Mr. Sheo, we, we've heard the president several times say he looks forward to going back to Dharad. And as a matter of fact, one daily yesterday said, uh, quoted him saying, look, if you put a lot of pressure on me, uh, Niger Republic will protect me. So, uh, and then we also thought, well, since the president is eager to go back home, many also thought, well, by extension, naturally, he will just dissolve the cabinet after that valedictory session, because that's what they expect will follow naturally. But that wasn't done. Uh, does that also mean that you yourself, you'll be working until the very last day, the last minute? Well, uh, thank you for giving us this opportunity. And I think that we, we, even after eight years, Nigerians still need to get used to the president's sense of humor. Uh, this thing about uh, going to Niger or protection from Niger, if you see how people are taking this very seriously, it's, it's as if to suggest that the, the president has, you know, loyalties outside the camp. That is absolutely not the case. He just have, has a way of throwing banters. And a way of easing tension around himself. And, and look at the, all of the excellent relationship he's leaving behind with our neighbors. If you are Nigerian Republic, you probably feel good about the president of Nigeria saying this about your own country, that he looks to you, you know, for protection or support. And, and um, the enormous cooperation from neighboring countries, especially inviting, you know, uh, terrorism. So yes, uh, 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 asked them to stay, and uh, I don't think there is anything unusual because all executive house, you, you are very familiar, more familiar with me perhaps than uh, on the point of, of what the constitution says. The entire executive authority of the nation is, is reposed in the person office of the president. He decides to whom he loans or gives a bit of it. So if he remains in office until Monday, 10 o'clock, when uh, incoming president Shoji Tunibu takes off, it then means that, that those powers are all available to him. And yes, his ministers uh, will continue. Do I will continue in office? I have not received any letter of sack. So uh, we will be there until we go to Eagle Square. Okay. And then the president, uh, he takes his leave to Dora. You know, quite a number of things were discussed uh, at that fake meeting. And so, uh, and then listening to the Minister of Aviation, that ministry's name was also changed. Uh, then he says the Nigeria Air will come up, I think the plane will arrive tomorrow, Friday. What kind of conversations went through? Because lots of people on the other side can't quite understand how a few days or hours to exit, many would have thought, Okay, if all of those plans were there to a large extent in terms of the management, ensuring that it goes smoothly, why not just hang on since it's the same party, the next government could ensure that that consistency and that transition happens smoothly as opposed to having some sort of gap because that may likely happen in terms of coming up with Nigeria Air now. The Nigeria uh, process had been on for a very long time. And... Uh, uh, perhaps in all ages of President Muhammad Buhari, there is no memo, policy memo on anything that had done the zigzag that uh, this year Nigeria had done. At least seven times it came before the Federal Executive Council before, before finally, finally it was let go. But don't forget that just when everything was set, and for the airline to start. Domestic operators in Nigeria, Nigerian Airlines, went to court and they got an injunction who said that Nigeria Air must not fly. This held up everything until barely a week or two ago. 
the minister has been bashed unfairly all over the place. He has been doing this with all of the commitment to put this airline in place, but simply that obstacles have been put on his path every inch of the way. Until just a week or two ago, when finally, finally, then the thing was declared for its resumption. I don't blame him. He wants to make history. The minister who put, who gave Nigeria a new airline. So it's understandable that he wants to kickstart it Friday, which is, you know, 24 hours from now. And, and, and uh, it will be to the relief of Nigerians. Certainly, it is something that. Uh, is going to be a game changer, especially for international travel. Did you say history, uh, Mr. Garba Sheho? Because some people will say that uh, after the collapse of Nigeria Airways, that there was an attempt to bring back an airline through Virgin Nigeria, the collaboration that the Nigerian government tried to have with Virgin Atlantic. Uh, so this is not exactly anything new. What you were saying was people were questioning this collaboration and how it was going to work with uh, the main source of income of another country, Ethiopia Airways. This is entirely different. Uh, it is entirely new because uh, past attempts had uh, been made to use resources from the Treasury to run business. And government is simply, simply a bad manager of businesses. We will continue to fail so long as these things are run by government. And this realization necessitates the fact that government of Nigeria will itself be a minority shareholder in this enterprise. It's going to be essentially business run. And that will mean that it will succeed. Well, we'll wait and see, Jessica. We know that the minister, I mean, you said you've been empowered to work until the very last day. We don't know how many flight rounds this is going to make before the new administration comes in. We'll wait and see just how that works and whether or not it's something that the new administration will also support. Uh, but I I'm wondering, looking at all that has been said, um, all that was said at FEC yesterday, and perhaps just some of the news that we also still saw, especially playing out at the National Assembly, the fact that 17 months after a probe reps, that members of the House of Representatives were unable to ascertain just how much petrol Nigeria consumes and how much we're paying subsidy on, the fact that uh, for the first time in a very long time, Interest rates have been hiked to 18.5% by the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria. The fair fact that, uh, you know, inflation is running away with the wind. Food inflation is at a high that, you know, it hasn't been seen until recent times. I'm just wondering, how is the Buhari administration able to say that it has been able to, it has fared in the face of these statistics coming out from government officials themselves? Well, if you are fixated to the odd numbers, the negative numbers, that sense of uh, despair will prevail. But the people can also choose to focus on the things that are very positive. If, 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 if assuming without meaning to be personal, Assuming you were the granddaughter of a Nigerian citizen who worked in the railway, your grandfather left, he, didn't, he died, he didn't get his pension. His son died, didn't get his pension. And you now have a president who has paid pension. To sign for their grandfathers. Children coming to sign for their fathers. Historical debts of pension are being paid. Was a president who has a who eradicated the polio. There are things that we live with, and they become normative. President who has abolished grand corruption. So it depends on what we choose to focus upon. Inflation, we have said all the time, that is a global phenomenon. Cost of living crisis, two nights ago, they had an election in Greece, and they were calling it cost of living election. 
because it was the sole determinant. Every country had gone through this because of COVID and supply chain disruptions, which impacted negatively on manufacturing, leading to the production of, of course, fewer goods and therefore costs rising. And we are a country that imports massively, yeah, including right. fuel you and I use in our cars. But, 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 Mr. Gamba so impacted. I, I'm not going to take away the fact, I mean, there is no government who, who will not try to do um, you know, some things right. So I'm not going to take away the positives. I think at the end of the day, what people try to do is compare, uh, weigh the good and the bad and see just how it, how the scale tilts. I think that's essentially what happens at the end of the day. How does the scale tilt? Uh, did the Buhari administration leave them better than when he came in? I, I think that's, and so maybe, maybe in some areas he might score some good and in some other, so the big question for a number of people is, are, are they really being left in a good place? The three key promises which he made to fight corruption, to, you know, better the economy and to also fight insecurity. In these three areas, uh, you've just spoken about how the president has fought grand corruption. By that, I imagine that you mean uh, that himself and perhaps his vice president, uh, you know, were not interested in any of the contracts that were being issued and nobody could mention the president's name in connection with any contract. However, when you talk about grand corruption, we also have to talk about our crude oil production which even as said yesterday, the CBN governor was complaining about how we are now at 1.1 million barrels per day. The amount of theft of our crude oil being produced in the creeks has been unprecedented in recent times. And people know that that is not committed by ordinary people. That is committed by people who are high and mighty and in, sometimes, uh, in some cases have protection. Uh, so I'm wondering, how would you say, uh, you know, how would you really assess that uh, statement that, oh, the president fought grand corruption in the light of this sort of revelation, especially when you look at the theft of crude oil? Well, I'm not going to be that spokesman who will say that uh, theft is not corruption. In fact, we, I think we had a former head of state who was sat before television and said that uh, stealing is not corruption. So it's worrisome. But uh, the, the difference President Buhari makes and he has made over these years is that that the, the thieving, the theft, is not directed by state. You had in the past a situation where the authorities determined that $2.3 billion be brought from CBM, put on the table and shared on the table and everyone put it in their pocket and, and just walked away. And the trials are still ongoing in our courts. So that has gone away. A petty corruption is still there. You encounter it, you're dealing with the maybe the water supply people or law enforcement. It does happen. But even then, the environment is, is, has substantially changed by the acceptance of the fact corruption is not normative, it should be done away with. So we have moved, you know, from that on from that. And a lot of the things that are going on in those communities, uh, theft of crude oil and, and all of these things, evidence has sufficiently been provided without collaboration of stakeholders, be they local communities or particularly some errant law enforcement, it could not have been happening. And to give credit to our Navy and to the military, the, the operations are ongoing. My reports may even be boring for some people because every day, every now and then, they are attacking, they are dismantling irrigated refineries, they are discovering illegal connections to pipelines, and the sabotage is being uncovered every day. This is essentially a Nigerian problem. You don't go to UK or Germany and you find somebody staging a gun to shoot at electricity cable to bring down, you know, so that they disrupt power. Or power towers are just being brought down for the joy of it, or people because they want to roll the cables and go and sell in 
in uh, Stokumbo in market by Nigerians and there are challenges of development that even the, not just hmm. well, well Mr. Shea, I hope you're still there it appears as though that connection uh, may have been frozen but we'll just double check uh, we lost you for a moment does this government know those behind crude oil thefts in this country Okay, uh, he's not back. Uh, we'll try and get him back. But Mr. Koye, uh, listening to Mr. Shio, okay, pardon me, we have him back. So we'll just get him right. and then we'll get, come back to you. Uh, Mr. Shio, I, was, I, I, I did ask you, does this government yeah. know those behind the crude oil thefts going on in this country? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So what is being done about it? Unknown. Many have been arrested. Many have been arrested and they are being prosecuted. The National Office of the National Security Advisor has done a lot of good job by, 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 by packaging those cases and presenting them before the law courts. Uh, are you looking for the names of uh, maybe senators or ex governor or so? They probably are not there. But if they are kingpins of that uh, size of influence, the, 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 the law has a very long arm, and eventually it will catch up with them. Mm. Well, from, okay, well, we, we have Chief Okoye here. Let's just uh, get him to weigh in on some of these things as well. Well, you heard a lot, if not all, of what Mr. Shio has said. Government is winding down. Um, validity effect has held, so he's looking forward to going back home, Mr. President. So from well, what you've heard and seen, well, uh, what do you think? Mm, well, very interesting uh, commentary and narrative, but um, sometimes when I listen to some of these people, you think whether they live in the country or whether they live in another planet. Uh, this, this is a government that came in with very massive uh, support, popularity, goodwill. And uh, in, no, in, not, in no distant uh, period of time, they squandered the whole, the whole thing. And uh, it soon became clear that it's either they really were not prepared or they didn't just know what to do. And they didn't have the humility to even ask, how do we get these things done? I don't think any Nigerian will say anything. One or two things, like you just said, maybe like your mother said, yes, one or two little token, tokenism here and there. But government is not operated based on tokenism. You cannot be doing little palliatives here, and there are fundamental issues that were not, you know, that were just not done. You talked about security. In fact, I think we care a kind of uh, summed it up when he said, when people say they want to take over from where he stopped, or they want to continue from where he stopped, the story of people dying every day, people being kidnapped, and then the dollar falling, uh, the naira falling every day. Is that what they want to continue with? Is uh, in one word, this is a total failure, a total failure. So whatever they are saying about people being arrested, okay, you arrest people dealing with the economy of the country, the main resource of the country, and we're not hearing about them. And the Dallas National Security Advisor did that, and then uh, people are, let's know who they are. Because they could, them, that people are building refineries. In any case, it's even an illogical thing to do. You do not have a national refinery. You don't have private refineries. And some people are striking out on their own. They are showing some skills. All you need to do is bring them. Are they not Nigerians? You bring them and say, okay, how do you people do this? Then set up the standard for them. That's how people develop. That's thinking outside the box. It's not only when they're able to write and they're NMPC and then they'll be able to design uh, the kind of refinery you want that can't even function. How many years have we talked about maintaining these refineries? Are they working? They're not working. Mr. Koye. So that's one. You, I don't, in, in any case, it's obvious that these people don't even walk around. They don't see ordinary Nigerians in the streets. They don't see ordinary Nigerians in the market, in the bottle parks, on the roads. So you just, like, they just sit somewhere in a one air conditioned office and look at reports and they read reports and they clap for themselves. If you go out there and you see, in fact, Nigerians have been so degraded in the past few years. And our fault lines are so clear. It has never happened. So for anybody to come and say that they achieved this and they achieved that, is that they are not living in Nigeria? And okay, look at the kind of joke we are, we are hearing. 
Okay, you're making joke about Nigeria Republic. Is Nigeria is Nigeria Republic the only neighboring country, the only one we have? Why not Cameroon? Why not the uh, Benin Republic? Why not Chad? So why what what's what there are things you don't even joke with, considering your position. There are things you don't even say. No, I, I considering hear... how sensitive some things are. <laughs> like he correctly said, yes, he's the president of the country. And everything about Nigeria centers around him. Therefore, it requires you to be circumspect in certain things you say or do. But you know, I, I know that uh so I mean you you've also tried to, to, to weigh in to vie for some of these positions, but yes. in history, the history of this country. Yes. Uh, I, come, I understand your point, though. But do you think, or can you remind us, is there any case in point in the history of this country where there is any president that has done anything or finished, and the people say, oh, yes, it are usually people are never really satisfied with whatever performance governments put in? OK. If you, if you go to the, before the period of the Civil War, people were there, but it's a different no. system, parliamentary system. Then came in Shagari. Shagari came 1979 to 1983. Without truncating his administration, they were, you know, setting some templates that will have worked. At least after the election, the man called everybody together and said, let's all work together. Every party, the five political parties then, invited them to form a government or national unity. That's by the way. I mean, because I think he looked at the politics of the country more than he looked at any other thing. And if the politics goes wrong, everything goes wrong. I'm a lawyer. But if war breaks out in Nigeria, being a lawyer is irrelevant. Therefore, I think the, we haven't gotten our politics right. And until we get it right, we're just busy about the bush. And it starts with, in fact, it, the, the least thing I expected to happen within this administration would have been to call a national conference. Let's define what national interests are. Let's define whether we're going to, how to uh, kind of reform the system. Like you say, restructure. You restructured the system and vis-a-vis -vis how it operated in the 60s. Okay, when Jonathan came, by the time Jonathan left, or by the time Obasanjo left, things were put in proper, okay, telecom alone that was created during Obasanjo's time. I mean, everybody, before he came in, we had just about 379,000 telephone lines out of about 600,000 that Nigel had. But by the time Obasanjo was leaving, we had more than 10 million telephone lines. It's, to an extent, curtailed having to make physical trips. He did a whole lot of salutary things, and now we're talking about social media. If that backbone was not established, we will be talking about social media and all that. Now, well, by the time Jonathan left, Nigerian economy was described as the fastest growing, the biggest in Africa. Okay, midway into this. This is the poverty capital of the world. So what are we talking about? There is no, you see, the, if you even start comparing, you, it's a waste of time. The question is... The, the failure is right. so huge, it's so humongous, you but don't even know where to start. You said in response to the issue, is there any precedent in recent history or for history in this country where uh, at the end of their tenure, most Nigerians will say, yes, you've done well, because if not, quite almost all the presidents will always yeah. say no. We're well, not happy with see, a lot of things that happened. You see, Chamberlain, like I have told you, right after independence, we did not do the kind of restructuring that was needed to for men and then okay. make this democracy work. By the time Shagari left, he left, he could, took him out. Okay. So there was no kind of review. By the time Obasanjo yeah, left, of course, Obasanjo, like I said, he did a whole lot of salutary things. Yet maybe the lifestyle could have, or his way of doing things, Blah, blah, blah. All right, we'll go to break. That was after 39 years of military rule. We'll return and take a look at some of the comments that the president had made about his performance, and then Mr. Shiro will also take it from there in just a moment. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, let me quickly um, follow up on that question that Chamberlain asked you, Mr. Okeke, um, about uh, the presidents that have uh, held office in this country and we never see anything good about them when their tenure ends. 
A follow-up is, in most cases, we always, after the new government has come into office, we always seem to praise the previous government. Oh, the previous government was better. I mean, I, you would recall the number of things that so many people have said about the Jonathan government, that ah, it was so much better than the Buhari government and all of that. Meanwhile, during the Jonathan government, we were, many people were, were complaining about this, or that, and all of that. Don't you see the same thing happening, or rather, do you see the same thing happening in this case? Maybe around six months, one year down the line, we'll be, many people will be praising the current administration for what we didn't know was good that they were doing while in office. Well, uh, thanks for the question, and uh, I'm okay not to kick if I had you well. So, um, you see, if you follow up with that, normally, like I said, people have weaponized the ways of taking resources from the system instead of weaponizing solution to the problems of the masses. And that's why sometimes people refrain from saying things they want to say because you, you don't know where their bread is buttered. Because everything is about Naira and Kobo and it doesn't make sense. No, no country oppressed like there must be ground rules. There must be fundamental issues. You must set down the principle. There are no principles, there are no values. And that's why people are more interested in their stomach. Now, the, the second thing is the, the quality or the strength of the opposition. During Jonathan's time, you had a very strong opposition. It was very strong in the media. But the, the, there was nothing that Jonathan did that was right. They weaponized the opposition so badly. But now, when people are even supposed to be, okay, what was the price of petrol at the time of Jonathan? Let's even start from there. How many times have we increased the price of petrol? Where I come from, it doesn't even sell for what you talk about the official price. In the East, if you buy it at 240 or 250, well, you're very lucky. You know, in some areas, you buy it for 260 a liter. So take that, for instance, and considering the fact that transportation in Nigeria is by that is 90% by road, so it is petrol-driven, and then the cost of oil is high. So look at that. What was the exchange rate in the time of Jonathan? It was about 200 and, uh, 220, maybe, at the, at the very highest. What is the exchange rate today? About 750. I think at the time, we were even thinking it was going to reach 1,000 per dollar. So there are things you need to check, unless you don't stay in Nigeria. Perhaps, if you uh, are in Mr. Nigeria Kure. and you move around, yeah, my apologies. and then you should be able to, on your own, answer some of these questions. Pardon me, um, Mr. Kui, perhaps the challenge here, here. My, uh, pardon yes. me, perhaps the challenge here is that of uh, yes. clear or direct vision that both the people of Nigeria and the, uh, the government at any time can be held to um, I mean, uh, by the way, I just uh, cited the Jonathan administration as an example. Many still have one good thing or the other to say about the Chagari government, the Buhari government the first time, the uh, Babangida government, even the Abacha government. Many people still had one thing or the other to say how oh, things were better under these governments, in whether, uh, despite the fact that while those governments were in office, Many people weren't really having fun. Perhaps then, Mr. Koye, the challenge is that of a national ethos or a national vision that every government that comes into office is held to. The Buhari government is going and has done all it wants to do based on what they think to be right for Nigerians. But then many are complaining one way or the other. Perhaps the challenge is that of a national ethos to which any and every government that comes into office must be held. Do you see that as an issue? Perfectly. Beautiful. You put it well. I mean, you have uh, at least come to what I've been saying. I've said this so many times. There is no national interest. And that's why people, like you said, they do things the best way they know how. They come in, whatever they think, or whatever people around them convince them to do, they do it. And of course, because you don't have that, regional interests come in, religious interests come in, uh, all kinds of personal interests come in. There is no time, and then people will now tell you, oh, politics is about uh, interest, it's not about no permanent friend and all that. That's crap. The interest that we're talking about here is national interest, and that is what is missing. And until we get our national interest clearly defined, we will, be, we will have all these kind of uh, hiccups all over the place. So we need to have that clearly. And that's what I was thinking. 
that the Buhari administration will at least will be quoted to Nigerians. Let's have a national interest to which other interests align. It's just like the American interest. They tell you American interest. It doesn't matter whether you're a Republican or Democrat. The system runs. And it runs on those basic principles that we don't have here. But what we have here is, oh, where is he from? Oh, where does he worship? Oh, where, would you, do I even want to see him? I don't, okay, I don't want to see him. But if we have those basic things, it doesn't matter who the person is. It doesn't matter where he comes from, whether he worships you or not. These are the things that we should be talking about. And because destiny is lacking, people take advantage of it to the detriment of the country. And things have gone on wrong for too long. And that's why the young people that are coming, and if the elderly ones can't fix it, the way the young people will do it will leave everything in tatters. The way this thing is going, because most of these people don't actually good. Okay, like, for instance, you, they will tell you there is telephone everywhere. But if you travel from here through Lokoja to Itobe, and then maybe you're going to Enugu, you see there are so many dead spots where you can't have service. Assuming there are crises on that road, because, but if these people travel by road, they will say these things. And they will form, formulate policies that will address them. But because most of the time, okay, you take your flight from here to you know, 45 minutes, 15 minutes, you're out. You don't know what other road users, other travelers are saying. Right. So there has to be clearly defined national interests or national ethos, like you have said. For as long as we don't have that, right. it will be like what Fela said. It's like a ball, a little ball in the street kicked. He will roll and roll and hit the head on this wall. He will roll and roll and hit the head. On. That's just, Fela, in fact, saw Nigeria a very long time. I saw it very clearly. Most of the things he said, if you listen to his music. Okay. So uh, what Mr. Just, Koye, just kind of, uh, you know, proves that. Uh, yes. let, let me go to uh, Mr. Garbacheo. I, I know he might have a response or two or even more uh, to some of the points you have raised. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Garbacheo, he has a, a very, very critical assessment of this administration, which you speak very highly of. And... Uh, would you say is that because he's not the grandchild to someone who's gotten pension? Because for him, some of these things you've mentioned are just tokenism. <laughs> well, uh, I, I, you don't blame uh, Mr. Okoye, a politician who is running for office and who possibly doesn't know that the election hearing is over. Actually, the, the vote has uh, been cast and the winner has emerged awaiting inauguration. So election year is over, it has to wait four more years. That's my message for you. And he, he thinks President Wasanjo will rem be remembered for telecoms. That's a fantastic idea that uh, President Shagari will be remembered for this and bringing people together. Yes, I want to tell him that Nigerians will remember President Muhammad Bari for raising power availability to 20,000 megawatts for doing second Niger bridge, for paying pensions, for doing bridges, local Oweto, all of these things, social investment. Never of, of, have we seen this in size and performance on the entire continent. Four million children taken off the streets, out of school children, removed from the streets and put back in, in school. And, and so there's so much to remember President Muhammad Buhari for. And I totally agree with the two of you, I owe all of that, and, 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 and Chamberlain. The honeymoon period for Nigerian governments is a very short one. And they, they welcome you, they love you, but from the beginning, shortly afterwards, this love turns into hate. We don't like our leaders. It is after they leave, off, they leave office that we begin to shower praises and love them. So we are content with that. That's why we are not bothered. We go and sleep very soundly. They abuse all of us. The crown is on our head today. Right. It will move from Prem Buhari's head to the head of uh, uh, President Ashwa Jutinibu in a few days. And you as I say, uh, on easy lies the head that wears a crown. But some would say, uh, well, President Buhari overpromised, and for them, he underdelivered. And when you talk about power, uh, a lot of people will be watching, really, because the capacity we have or our potential is way different from the reality. Just two days ago, uh, the reps, the House of Representatives, was asking the federal government uh, to do something to tackle the power sector crisis. So that's very much in the face of a lot of Nigerians, and it was a major one uh, for the House of Reps. But on a final note, uh, Mr. Sheo, what do you say to Nigerians who listen to you, who have listened to you for eight years now, almost eight years, have listened to Mr. Adishino, and as Chief Okoye said, he wonders, 
Do these people even stay in Nigeria? Do they face our reality? So what do you say to those people who listen to you and wonder, how do these people sleep at night? Because for them, the government did not perform up to expectations. What do you say to those people who sometimes they see you on TV and are like, no, I don't want to listen to Mr. Shew. I don't want to listen to Mr. Additional because I do not trust what they say. Well, what I will say to them is that President Muhammad Buhari is a, is a victim of the tyranny of expectation. And uh, Nigerians thought he would solve all the problems of the country in eight years. There is never a country on earth that has served, solved all problems 100%. But President Muhammad Buhari has done his best for the country. He deserves to go home and rest, and Nigerians will cherish him afterwards. All right, so Mr. Shio, what will you be doing after you leave office? Can you hear me, Mr. Shio? What next for you? What next for me? Yes. <laughs> I keep saying, for eight years, I haven't gone on vacation. There is no annual leave for personal staff. Priority number one is go on vacation. When I rest, I'll think of what to do next. But I'm already a farmer. You should know this. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Gabashio, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, and Chief Gotsu Nokoye former presidential candidate of the UDP. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time here today.